Today we're working with Photoshop Elements 13. We're going to work with the cloning tool. We've known the cloning tool in the past to fix scratches, blemish marks, remove date stamps, and along in those areas. Cloning can be also looked at where you select an area, copy an area, and paste an area. You end up with edges around whatever you've pasted. Cloning lets you softly copy one area to another area with a small brush or a larger brush. You can adjust the brush to whatever you want. Some of these are going to go fairly quick. Some of these can. I can do some of these in just a matter of minutes. The one I have on the screen right now is an old one that's been around for I don't know how long. It falls under that. What do you see wrong in this picture? It's been on Facebook, uh, Instagram, been emailed around and all of that. If you haven't spotted it while we were talking here, if you look at the little girl on the left, she was photoshopped in and she has an extra hand on her shoulder. There's nowhere it came from. So if they wanted to finish this picture right, they should have used something similar to the cloning tool or a cloning tool and uh, remove that hand. I'm going to bring this picture up just a little bit. I'm going to come over here on the left side of the screen. You'll find halfway down, you'll find the tool called cloning stamp tool. If I click on that, you'll see down at the bottom, it opens up several things. Sam sample of it on all layers. We're only using one layer. You can also change the your brush so it'd be a sharper or a uh, more feathered out edge brush. I usually leave it at the default. You also have the size of your brush. You can see if I slide this over a little bit, my brush can be bigger. Bring it back down. In this particular case, I don't need a very big brush, a small brush. And the intensity of the copy over uh, with the clone, I most generally am, am right at 100%. I think I'm going to raise that up just a little bit more. This is not a clear picture. I think it's been copied so many times and it's so pixelated, but I just wanted to use it real quick to give you an idea of cloning and how that should have been used in this one. I'm going to go more in detail on cloning, but on this one here, what you do at this point, if you can see where I've got the cursor, you hold down the Alt key, you'll see it changes press the left mouse button once and then come back up. What it's going to do, it's going to copy and paste where I made that first mark uh, with the mouse. As you can see, as I hold the mouse down, you'll see a cross where I started and you can see the cursor or the brush that it's copying that into there. Whatever it sees underneath that cross, it will start copying it as I come up this way. Make little short uh, brush strokes, uh, especially on something this small, and uh, you won't get so frustrated. Now our next point is to come down here on uh, the back of the bench. You can see where I'm going up and down. I'm going to start by putting it right on the edge of that board. Press down on the Alt key. Press the left mouse button once. Let off. And I can come over to the side and you'll see that wherever that cross is and wherever the brush is, we'll start copying it. And that'll kind of bring the bench up next to our arm and kind of finish this off a little bit. That could have been used to clean up this photo and that photo may not have ended up all over the internet as being what's wrong in, in my picture. Moving along, this is a picture that I've used. People say, why don't you use your own picture? Well, in this case I did, and this picture was taken a couple years ago. Uh, I do have to say, since that picture was taken, I have lost 30 pounds and still working on trying to lose a few more. But in the meantime, this is a good tool that cloning, uh, we've talked about using it for blemishes and scratches. This one we're going to use it to remove something a little bigger. 
on this one here, I'll get in a little more in detail. I'm going to zoom this in here around that uh, sign. If I come up here in the blue area, hold down the Alt key, you'll see it changes. Hit the mouse button once, let off. What I'm going to do now is move over by the words. As I hold down on the mouse button, you'll see the cross. That's where it's copying from. As you can see, as I bring the brush over the words, it starts painting it out. Remember I said use short brush strokes. Once in a while you may have to go back and hold down the Alt key, hit the button again. I picked up some shadowing there. You can see as I come through there, I can come down here, hold down the Alt key again, drop down to the second word. When I push the mouse button, you'll see the cross. That's where it's copying from. And I take short brush strokes. Now, to give you an idea of what we're talking about, if I come up here on the line between the blue and the white on the side of the building, hold down the Alt button, hit the mouse once. And if I come up here, hold down the mouse, and start going across, you can see I'm copying. Come back up here. You can see I'm copying that area up there. So what we're doing is we're pasting from below, moving it above. Or you can paste it down below if I want to come up here and hold down the Alt key and then come down here and paste across. You can see what I've done down there. That gives you maybe a little feel for how the tool works. Now, what I'm going to do here is give you an idea of a place that you can use it. I said I got a few too many pounds on, and the way I was facing, I wasn't thinking, and uh, what can I say? What I'm going to do is use the cloning tool. I'm going to come up in this area here where there's some of that in the background. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, press the mouse button once, come down over here next to my shirt, and I'm going to start coming down. As I come down, I am copying where the cross is at. As I copy where the cross is at, it's feathering it in with my t-shirt. And I can come back up. I'm still holding the mouse down in this particular case. But it's copying everything over there on that left side over to the right side. And you can come back and kind of feather it a little more. Get the edge a little more straight. I'll move that down a little bit because I need to make that shirt come all the way in. And maybe cut it off a little bit right there. Now, did that take very long? We're going to come over here and we're going to zoom back out a little bit. It does make a little bit of difference on me. I think I did cut a few pounds off. Wish they would come off that easy. One more item that you might know, or I noticed it right away, is I was probably overdue for a haircut or the way the shadow ended up on the wall. I can also correct that. I can also give myself a little bit of a haircut here, make the brush just a little bit smaller, and maybe zoom in just a little bit. There. Go back to the cloning tool. As you can see there, I'm going to go up in this area, hold down the Alt key. You'll see it change the cursor. Press the mouse button once. Come back down here, and I am going to trim off and give myself a haircut and trim the back of my neck a little bit. That didn't take very long. Takes less time than it does at the barber shop. And what we've done there is we've knocked a few pounds off, trimmed the hair on the back of my neck. And I hope that gives you a little bit of an understanding on that. The next one we're going to move on to, and we're moving on kind of fast here, but this is a house that I do real estate work for. 
And one of the things I run into once in a while on homes like this, especially the outdoors, if you'll look over here on the left side, power lines hanging down there. And in this particular case, they had some stuff in the yard. Uh, this is a drainage pipe that goes underneath the drive and some bare spots in the yard just to dress it up for them. Up here in the left corner, you can see these power lines very easily to get rid of. Come over here, pick up the cloning tool. In this case, I'm going to make the brush just a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hold down the Alt key. Press the mouse button once. Come over here on the power line. And as you can see, and I can kind of go back and forth a little bit to make sure I get it out of there. And take that right out of there. Now, it'll copy everything from where that cross is over. So I try to keep the cross fairly close. I'm going to make this brush just a little bit bigger. Well, not that big. Because I'm seeing some areas in here. There is a little bit difference in the blues. I'm going to hold this down again. But I need to go over here and I need to clean up this. And come back down the other side of that wire, where the wire was. The blues change a little bit on me. So you have to kind of play with it a little bit. Make that brush just a tad bigger. I didn't mean to make it. Well, we'll see what that does. Hold down the mouse, click, and come back over here. Actually, that did a pretty good job of cleaning that up. And I could probably clean off some of this stuff over here, too. Real quick, just come in here. I wanted to get some of this other done, but this will give you an idea what we can do here. The same thing on the roof. When you're trying to blend a pattern or a brick wall, it's fairly easy because it will blend and the person will never even hardly notice it. Because we've got a pattern in that uh, roof tiles. And that standpipe for the the standpipe up there. Uh, covers up fairly easy. We're going to go over here and take just a little bit of the tree and kind of put the tree up here on the top. But uh, we can get that cleaned up fairly quick. Now, quickly, I'm going to run down here to the yard a minute, show you. Grass is also another thing that's very easy to copy from one area to the other. Remember, we're going to hit the Alt key, hit the mouse button, and we're going to come over here, and it's going to copy... And I'm doing it in short strokes and copied that uh, white tile uh, drain right out of there. We also have a uh, uh, sprinkler head right there. That's gone. Remember, if you're doing this for real estate for resale, you've got to be kind of careful. You don't want to remove something that is actually there. Now, cleaning up the yard a little bit, uh, you can get by with that. But you don't want to alter the house itself because the people may be looking at this house as far as purchasing it. And it may be false advertising. You say the one place about that would be like the driveway. But if you're doing it for your own personal use, this driveway has a lot of cracks and stuff in it. So we can come in here and we can clean those cracks right out. And the time we get done... We can straighten this driveway out and take out all the cracks and stuff on the driveway. Alt key. Come right down here like this. You can just kind of bounce around with your paintbrush. I'll watch it a little bit. Hit the thing again. Come down here. Kind of go back and forth to give it a little texture so you really don't see the brush strokes. Come back over here to this crack right here. Kind of come along in here, hold down the Alt key. So I kind of go back and forth a little bit, kind of get rid of the brush stroke so you don't see the brush stroke. 
and clean up that as we come back around here. And you'll see once in a while, if I get too far into it, you can see that it'll end up copying the same one over again. So you got to kind of watch where you go with the brush. It's something you'll get used to. I'm going to bring that back down a little bit and let you see the whole picture. You can see we've removed quite a bit of the cracks out of there. I've done all of them on my own picture and removed some of the clutter that's on the grass here. We removed most of the power lines in this picture, but in order to keep things moving along is this is what the picture looks like after I have finished it. Power lines are gone, the yards cleaned up, and also all the cracks are gone in the middle of the driveway. Again, if you're using this for real estate and resale, be very cautious because they think they're looking at a picture that uh, with no cracks in the driveway and that's false advertising. This is the one that's going to get real, real detailed. This is the one you got to have some patience for. This was a picture that was taken at one of the zoos of this parrot. And you can't always get these kind of pictures outside of the cage. They just don't let them outside the cage. But there is a way to get rid of the cage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. We've got some step-by-steps on this, which we'll clean up fairly quick. And then so we can advance this along. Remember what we're going to do. We're going to use the cloning tool. Move the brush up just a tad. Maybe we'll leave it there. Remember, we're going to clone, and you see the marks on there, on my, that's coming from the previous screen. So it's there until I hit the Alt key again. So if I come up in this area right about here, alongside the bar here, what I want to do is copy this area onto top of that uh, cage bar. So I hold down the Alt key. Hit the button once, come over here on that bar, and I'm going to start coming down. As you see, as I come down and back and forth, it's copying where the cross is over to where the paintbrush is. And you've got to kind of watch because I picked up some of the bar. I need to get rid of That's why you need to stop and restroke your brush once in a while because what happens it remembers what was underneath there and I come back up I just take it out in little chunks again this is something that is something that takes a little more patience it takes time to do this now I can come over here and do the same thing here hit the, hit the alt key push the button once come back over here and I can start taking out this one. And you can see that some of the areas I pick up stuff I want to, that I didn't really want to repeat. And I'm going to run into that with this darker area coming up. You can see this darker area. What I need to do is get that darker area in there. So I may have to pick up something from somewhere else, maybe from down here. And then come up into here somehow and kind of. And you can come along and just hit the mouse button. Click, 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 click. Rather than, rather than moving the mouse like a paintbrush. Hold down the thing. Correction. Hold down the Alt key. Come back. Do some correction in here. And you eventually... You've kind of blended those two areas together. Kind of gives you an idea of what we're doing here. To speed things up, I've done the next section of this and uh, kind of speed it up a little bit. As you can see right here, the hardest part on this one right here was, if I go back, is the eye itself. In order to do the eye, I had to place... A, play some small games with it. But at the same time, what I did too on that one, I did go to the paintbrush. And 
used the paintbrush and brought in part of the eye. The eye is black. And I did paint the eye in as black. And then I went back with the cloning tool and started picking up a little smaller cloning tool like in here. Hold down the Alt key, then come over, hold down the Alt key, and started working it around the eye. And like I said, a lot of this is patience, and eventually got that eye out of there. So I've got quite a bit of the bars out of the way. Now, we can also take the time to do the bars off of him because you got an area outside here, too. So that's going to go even quicker because I can make my brush a little bigger because I'm picking up pretty much a solid area. Hold down the Alt key, click once, and then come over here and start erasing this out of the background. Sweep the brush up and down. And you notice we've got some different colors here. And so let's get rid of this first. Let's go up and click here. Let's get rid of that. That's gone. I'll come down here. I want to show you as you, you've got to kind of watch what you're doing. You've got a shadowed area in here. And so you may want to hold down the Alt key there and drag and drag that part down this way. And that way the shadow stays with it and you didn't change the color of the shadow and you can see I brought that shadow on down the rest of the way and remember this is a different color than what was up above so you've got the same thing down on this side sometimes I'll do the outer edges and then come back and do the center hold down the alt key hit the mouse button once and come down to about here and you can see I can start bringing that out And as we go along, you'll see that we're slowly removing more and more of the bars. And he's becoming more visible. Same thing down here on the, on the board that he's standing on. We can clean all of that off this part up in this area. Again, to speed this up a little bit, I've gone ahead and did the next phase of it. This is what it looks like now that I'm all done with it. I'm not going to take the bars all out on this side. What I will probably do is just crop this part of him and use him. If I want to, I could take the time and take out all the rest of the bars in here. Again, something like this is time consuming. So if you're going to work on something like this, plan on spending some time on it. And you don't have to do it all at the same time. Do a save and then come back and do it again tomorrow the next day and finish it then you don't have to do it all the same day and at the same time I hope that helped uh, that's the cloning tool cloning tool I used to use it back in elements 9 10 11 uh, this happens to be 13 uh, currently 15 is out the cloning tool is still there and still uh, is a largely used tool you'll find between that some of your uh, overlays, layers, layer masks, and stuff like that. And the cloning tool be, will become part of your, your own personal toolbox. And I use that a lot, if nothing else, just to fix little blemish marks or something on that order. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, have a good day, and uh, hope you watch our next video.